Greetings, I'm Professor K, and in this short video presentation, we're going to see how we go about seizing the Operation Master roles from a failed forest root domain controller using the NTDS util. So if you work with Windows servers and domain controllers long enough, there will come a time when you will lose one of your main domain controllers to forest root, and you're going to have to seize the Operation Master from that failed machine and put them onto a replica. And that's what we're going to be doing in this lab. So for this scenario, we have two domain controllers. We have the forest root and we have a replica. Now the DC1, which is my forest root, has had a catastrophic failure and it cannot come back up. It has been determined that that machine will need to be replaced. So in the meantime, we're going to have to seize the Operation Master roles and bring them over to my replica, which for this lab is DC3. So for this lab, make sure you've done a snapshot of your replica without the Operation Master roles being seized. That way, if you need to roll back, it's nothing more than just restoring that snapshot to a previous time. So for this lab to work, you have to make sure that your DC1 is powered off. The only machine that needs to be powered on for this lab is your replica. Now for this lab, the name of my replica is DC3. The name of your replica may differ. So you may not notice right away that the DC1 is offline because the replica will pick up the logons and do the authentication for the domain. But after a while, because those operation masters are no longer present, things will start to get flaky on the network. Timing issues may occur. And there are other reasons why you've got to have those floating single operation master roles seized and put onto the replica machine. So let's begin this lab by going up to Tools. And let's go into the Event Viewer. Now the first thing that you want to do when you think that there's something up with replication or something up with the network in general, you want to go up inside of the event viewer and see if there are any indicators in the log files. So you've got a number of log files up here you can look in. You've got some window logs, but the one that we're concerned with is replication, and that is the DFS replication. So if I click on this, give it a second to refresh, you'll see that we've got some error messages up here. And if we highlight one, it says the DFS replication service failed to communicate with the partner DC1. So that should be an indicator that, yes, we have a domain controller failure on our network. So the replication is not going to occur. That would be an indicator. So continuing on with our troubleshooting, we can close out the event viewer. And now we can go up to Tools, and we can go into Active Directory Sites and Services. Now this is where replication is going to take place. This is where you have your connector. And this is where the servers get that connection and establish that replication topology. So let's go ahead and make this full screen. I'm going to move this over just a little bit. Open up my Sites container. I'm going to go down here to where we have the default first site name. Go ahead and expand that. Expand my servers container. Now you'll notice that I have two servers in here. These are the only two domain controllers that I have on my network at this time. And if you look at DC1 and you look at the NTDS settings, you can right click here and you can force it to replicate configuration from the selected DC. So let's go ahead and do that. And give it a couple of seconds. It might take a minute or so for the replication to fail and then you're going to get a general error message that the replication did not take place. And after about a minute or so this error message pops up lets you know that the replication could not take place. Go ahead and close that out. So now we're pretty sure that DC1 is down and it's down hard. And so in a previous lab we built a replica that we're working on here. My replica is DC3 the name of your replica may differ, but we built that so that we could mitigate the problem of not having a domain controller, a force root domain controller, on the network. So in the event that a, of a catastrophic failure, we would still have Active Directory, DNS, and we also installed DHCP when we promoted the machine to a domain controller. 
Now since our DNS is using Active Directory integrated zones, we know that the database is equal regardless of what machine that DNS is running on. So the DNS on DC1 and DC3 were equal. There was no primary, there was no secondary. They are Active Directory integrated zones. And to ensure that we had DHCP in the event of a catastrophic failure, we configured DC1 and DC3 for DHCP failover. And we give them each 50% of the IP4 scope. So that when DC1 went down as the primary DHCP server, and it was down for an extended period of time, DC3 would be notified that it is now the primary, and it will then start handling all the DHCP requests for the network. We can close out the Active Directory Sites and Services. We can go ahead and minimize our Server Manager. Let's go to Start, and let's go up and find our Windows PowerShell. And we're going to right-click on our PowerShell. We're going to go to More, and then we're going to select Run as Administrator. So continuing along with a little bit more troubleshooting, we can identify which domain controllers are the forest roots by using the DS Query command. So in this instance, I've used the DS Query space server space dash forest command to identify the forest roots for this network. I'm going to go ahead and hit enter. And it comes back and it tells me that I have two domain controllers that are qualified as the forest root, DC1 and DC3. I next want to find out which of my Forest root domain controllers is holding the operation master roles for the forest and the domain. To do this, I've typed in netdom space query fsmo. I'm now going to hit enter. And after a short pause, it comes back and it tells me that all five of my floating single master operation roles are being held by DC1. Now, one of the most important and sensitive operation master roles is the schema master. So this by default cannot be installed by just anyone. It has to be an administrator that is also a member of the schema admin group. And you also have to register the DLL to seize the operation master role or to move it in this case. So I've typed in reg service 32 space SCH mmgmt.dll to register this service on this domain controller. I'm going to go ahead and hit enter. It comes back letting me know that the DLL was successfully registered on my replica domain controller. I'm going to go ahead and hit OK to that. I'm going to go ahead and clear my screen. Now for the rest of this lab we will be using the NTDS util. I'm going to go ahead and type in the Word NTDS util and I'm going to hit enter and you'll notice that I'm now inside of the system 32 folder where this application is located and we're now loaded and ready to continue on with the lab. Now a word of warning you can hose your active directory critically by messing up some of these commands and using the NTDS util improperly. So make sure that you take your time and that you follow the steps exactly as they are written. So the first command we have to type in is role and then hit enter and we're into the SMMO maintenance role. The next thing we're going to type in is connections. Hit enter and now we have to make a server connection and to do this, we're going to type in connect to server DC3. It's now binding to DC3. And now we're going to type in Q for quit. And we're back inside of the SMMO maintenance role. We are now ready to begin the seizure of each one of those operation master roles one at a time. Let's see how we do that. The first role I want to seize is the naming master. So I've typed in C's naming master. I'm going to go ahead and hit enter. And it asks me, are you sure that you want to seize this role? 
I'm going to go ahead and say yes. Then it's going to attempt a safe transfer. That's going to fail, and then it will continue on with the actual seizure. So it can take a couple of minutes for this seizure to take place, so do be patient, and make sure that you read everything that is given to you at the prompt. So the next role that I'm going to seize is the infrastructure master. Now make sure that you check your spelling and your command syntax to ensure that everything is correct. I'm going to go ahead and hit enter. Again, I'm prompted to confirm that I want to seize this role. I'm going to say yes. Again, it's going to attempt a safe transfer. And in just a moment, it will find that it can't and it will do the seizure. And after a moment, it comes back to the prompt, letting us know that the seizure did take place. The next Operation Master role that I want to seize is the RID Master. So I've gone ahead and typed that into the prompt, and I'm now going to hit Enter. Again, I'm asked to confirm. I'll say yes, and again, a safe transfer tries to take place. The RID Master was successfully seized. We're now going to move on to seizing the Schema Master. So I've typed in C Schema Master at my prompt. I'm not going to hit Enter. Again, I'm asked to confirm. And again, the safe transfer will attempt to take place. So we're now ready to move on to seizing the last role, which is the Primary Domain Controller Master or the PDC Master. So I'm going to go ahead and just hit Enter. This doesn't need the word Master, so I'm just going to bring up my up arrow and get rid of the word Master. I'll hit enter now. Again, I'm prompted to confirm that I want to seize this role. I'll say yes. And again, another safe transfer will be attempted. And then when that fails, the final seizure will take place. We've now seized all five of the Operation Master roles, and we're ready to proceed on with the metadata cleanup, which is removing any instance or reference to DC1 on my DC3 replica domain controller. Before we can commence with the metadata cleanup, we first have to quit this current role that we're in. To do this, I'm going to type in the letter Q and hit Enter. Now I'm back at the NTDSUtil. At the prompt for my NTDSUtil, I'm going to type in the command metadata cleanup. I'm going to hit Enter. Now you'll notice that I'm into this role. The next command that we have to type in is connections. I'm going, to go, I'm going to go ahead and hit enter. Now for my server connections, I have to connect to server DC3. So I type in connect to server DC3. Hit enter. Again, I type in the letter Q for quit. And I'm back at the metadata cleanup. The next command that I'm going to type in is select operation target. Once I have that typed in at the prompt, I'm just going to hit enter. Now to find my target, I have to first list the sites. I'll go ahead and type in list sites and I will hit enter. The number assigned to my site is zero. So I'm going to type in select site zero. So at my prompt, I've typed in select site zero. I'm not going to hit enter. I next have to list the servers that are in the site. To do this, I've typed in the command list servers in site. I'm not going to hit enter. DC1 is my target, and it has been assigned the number of zero. So I'm going to say at the prompt, I'm going to type select server zero. I'm going to go ahead and hit enter. I next have to list the domains that are currently available for this network. So I've typed in list domains at the prompt. I'm going to go ahead and hit enter. I only have one domain, so I'm going to use the number zero, which has been assigned to it, and I'm going to type in select domain zero. Once I have that typed in at the prompt, I'm going to go ahead and hit enter. And I next type in the letter Q to quit. And I'm back at the metadata cleanup. We're now ready to remove the metadata for our selected server or DC1. To do this, I've typed in at the prompt, remove selected server. I'm going to go ahead and hit enter. 
and it needs for me to confirm that we are ready to remove this metadata from our Active Directory. I'm going to go ahead and say yes. Once the metadata has been removed, it just comes right back to the prompt. We can now type in the letter Q to quit. And we're back at the NTDS util. And we can also type in another letter Q here to exit the utility. You can now go ahead and close out your PowerShell. Let's go ahead and bring up our server manager. And then from the tools, let's go over to Active Directory Sites and Services. We got a little bit more cleanup to do. Now up inside of our Active Directory Sites and Services, you still see an instance of DC1 underneath the servers container. To get rid of this, we just right click on it. And from the context menu, we're going to select Delete. And it asks us to confirm. And confirm one more time. You can go ahead and close out your Active Directory Sites and Services. And from the Tools menu, let's go to Active Directory Users and Computers. Go ahead and make this full screen. Now up here, up inside of your domain, you can look under Domain Controllers and ensure that there's only one present, and that is DC3. And so that's going to conclude this short video presentation on how we go about seizing the Operation Master roles from a domain controller that is no longer available on the domain. So if you have any questions or concerns about any of the material that was covered in this short lab, please do not hesitate to reach out and contact your instructor, and I'll see you in my next video.